auxiliary things. The main thing is what you said, no recipe. That recipe is a top secret. Only I think two, three people in the company of which has more than one lakh employees know about that one. So they wanted to maintain as a secret. At any point of time, even those two individuals, they do not know the other person. As an as a individual, I know that I have the access to part A of the composition. Part B will be with someone else. Only if part A and part B are put together, then you will get this composition. So that way, that means they do not give the exclusive composition rights to anyone. Even if one wants to have a theft or anything, it is not possible with a single person. Similarly, if you take the example of pharmaceuticals, especially the drugs, the medicines for fever or for coronavirus, whatever it is. So everyone has their own unique composition. So that means some of them have filed a patent application. Some they do not go, they do not want to go in the patent route because they think that by disclosing the entire information, it may not be much useful. Rather, I'll keep it at a secret. I'll manufacture in my own way. I do not bother about the copying of this because I am taking enough steps. It is not possible to copy. So my uh, met method of manufacturing that drug is so complex. That means it requires so much of big machines, so much of uh, so many intermediate are required. So that means even if one person thinks it will not be possible, even if there is any breach of data, it will not be possible to manufacture a similar product. So in these type of cases, so they maintain it as a secret. So is there any law? There's no specific law. It's only the law of contracts, law of contracts where you sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, on competitor agreement with uh, uh, your uh, employer saying that I will not disclose the information anywhere even after the employment. And there are certain companies who say that you should not join. These are the list of competitors. You should not join for the period of maximum of five years or something like that. For five years after leaving this job, you cannot join these companies. So they may say that. You can test it. You will give the final composition you are giving, right? So if you took at the Coca-Cola composition, you say uh, that 95% uh, is water, 2% uh, is carbon dioxide, 1% is uh, that uh, composition in a technical word, you will try to say. Or you will try to give in a very simple word. But he will not give exact chemical composition, he may not give that. So if he gives exact chemical composition, then there will be a problem. So this is about trade secrets. So how does it apply for a management? Next slide. Previous slide. Previous slide. Here. Yeah. So these include like as a management people. So how you maintain sales methods, distribution methods, consumer profiles, advertising strategies, list of suppliers and clients, and manufacturing process. So how you maintain this is very, very important. As a company manager, you cannot all the sales like details you cannot give. You cannot give all your uh, consumer profiles saying that we have high profile customers. You cannot give. So, so this information you have to keep it at most secret. So if this comes out, then even your competitors, they will also go to them saying that you are getting a product at this um, X price. We can give X minus something at a price which is lesser than you with the same quality. So you will lose the contracts. You will lose the contracts for uh, big companies. So maintaining contracts is a very, very big risk because if they give all these minute details to the competitor, so then uh, they will also give it. So for this, what I mean, they have very good uh, and nowadays everything is there online. So you have online restriction. So if you are a junior manager, so you can only even you cannot read something. Maybe if you are next to senior manager, at least you can read the information. If you are a general manager, maybe you can lay, make minor changes or you can something like as you go up in the ladder, you have this asterisk, uh, asterisk uh, restrictions. So, yeah. So here I was telling contrary to protected without registration because as such there is no uh, registration. So you have to take utmost care. So how you keep your uh, diamond in the 
right home. So you take uh, uh, one bedroom, you lock it, and we have one uh, store well or viva. You lock it inside that one. There is also one more. You lock it, and inside there is one more. You also like that means four or five level securities. So similarly, as now we are maintaining the entire information online, so we need to have at least three to four levels of security. Yeah, it could be biometric, it could be email, mobile password, maybe or maybe notification to your manager. So that means in some companies, if you are trying to open certain files, so immediately a mail will go to your manager saying that this person is trying to open this file. Would you like to give access or not? So many restrictions should be there. So this is how you protect your trade secrets. Next slide. So this is mainly for the electronic people. So if you look at any phone, so you have a motherboard which has a unique design. So the motherboard of uh, iPhone will be different. The motherboard of uh, uh, Samsung, it will be different. The motherboard of Nokia, it will be different. For all electronics, you have a uh, integrated circuit design called as like something like a motherboard. What you can do, you can change the processor of different. You can change the storage. You can uh, increase other uh, or change other components, but the base structure, sorry, remains same. So that base structure can be protected under integrated circuit design. So semiconductor integrated circuit means the product having transistors and other circuit elements which are in some form or semiconductor material or insulation material or inside the semiconductor material and design. It could be for a laptop, it could be for a mobile phone, it could be for a TV or anything. So you have a motherboard where so many electronic components are put into it. So you can protect it. So how you can, as a company, what they will do? So they may increase the RAM capacity or decrease the RAM capacity. So they may increase the storage or this or that. Maybe they may increase the power battery or uh, source or other things. So they, that means the board remains safe. They can increase or decrease and based upon that one, they launch various models to the market. So that can be protected as a lay IC layer layout design for integrated circuits. So there is one act called as the integrated circuit layout design and act, so which protects these kind of uh, designs. So normally very less number of uh, applications are filed under this uh, act. Is very maybe I do not know the reason exact reason, but there are various number five. Next slide. So this is one of the most interesting one. So geographical indication. So that means the name itself indicates geographical indication. So that means a product that is produced from a particular geography. So why so here GI are sign used on moves that way. Specific geographical origin, quality or that are put to the place of origin. So that means because of the skill or because of the soil in that particular area, the goods produced are having a very good taste or features or characteristics. Can anyone say examples of a GI? Yeah, so when the other uh, examples. Hyderabad Ladu. Hyderabad is not Biryani. Hyderabad Khalim is registered as a GI. Tirupati Ladu is also registered. So even then we have the Darjeeling tea, Mysore sandals, so and uh, Pochampalli saris. If you look at the saris, and we have uh, Nirmal toys, Chenna Patnam toys, so many. Every area they have got uh, certain skills how to prepare. And uh, even like uh, if you look at the main example I give you because there are no gents, the scotch whiskey. So the whiskey, the whiskey made in Scotland is called as a scotch whiskey. Because of that weather conditions, so what happens is that fermentation uh, takes place in a good way and uh, the whiskey tastes, the whiskey blend which is produced has a very good taste and that's the reason why they charge around 5 to 10 percent more normal than the whiskey. If normal Whiskey is 1000 rupees per liter. The scotch whiskey in the range of uh, 5000 to 10,000. So, because scotch, so people, those who have a lot of money, they drink only scotch whiskey, not the normal whiskey, because it has a very good taste characteristics. 
similarly there are also many food products as well like if you take uh, certain cheese so there is one cheese called as a camembert cheese so what the speciality of that one is it's a swiss cheese made in switzerland because of that weather conditions and because of that uh, microorganisms so it has like some ice like structure as if you have put small ice small ice on the cheese so some people like that one it's called as a camembert cheese like that you can know and the best example is tirupati laddu because uh, it has given it was given in gi because the taste that you get it that is prepared in the tirupati laddu the composition or uh, the way they prepare it is unique so it has it was given gi status people used to say it's uh, like uh, tirupati laddu has got a, a patent because these newspaper people they do not know because no one was given a session on ipr for them so they inter mix like for copyrights patents trademarks everything they try to put it as a signal but it's not patent it is geographical indication that was given to tirupati excellent yeah so here like in india if you go to i think there are now more than maybe hundreds now there are hundreds of uh, like even uh, now people are fighting for uh, this kolkata so even for sweets so kolkata says my own uh, rasgulla is mine and orissa says it's mine so now the state governments are also encouraging like uh, if you take uh, telangana so telangana government is encouraging this pochapalli sarees so it is registered as a, as a gi and even uh, kanchipuram sarees so it is also a gi so the silk uh, sarees produced in and around kanchipuram so they are called as a kanchipuram sarees and mainly they are woven hand woven or uh, loom woven but they are not made in uh, they are not made of the machines so why because of which uh, you get a certain pattern texture of that saree so because of which they charge around 50 to 20000 but now the shopkeepers what they are doing is so they are making the similar sarees on machines very big machines which they even they do not cost 3000 or 4000 and they are putting the label of kanchipuram sarees or some other gi tag and they are also selling for 15000 20000 1 lakh 2 lakh whatever it is so who has to raise the kanchipuram beavers association has to raise because it's not for gi is not for a single person it is for that unit that association so like if you take hyderabad uh, alip so the members of hyderabad holders association something association will be there so they only can call it as hyderabad alip so that name sir we don't think it we are getting any tax in this gi yeah, yeah it we have to that is a lengthy process is not so easy so we have to give the historical the benefits and how this product is unique in terms of features so why it is unique so all the details have to be submitted to the geographical indications office so earlier it was there only in chennai now we have visit a new delhi and chennai as well yeah. so this is about gi direct like this Yes, so these are some of the examples which are valid the darjeeling tea and the renewal is possible there the term is 10 years and we can renew it so if the first uh, gi it, there was a uh, there was a conflict between the rice mainly if you take north india so we export basmati rice so basmati rice is like where uh, like punjab the old punjab which is now part of uh, india and part of pakistan so both people can put that basmati rice india and pakistan so in between what happened so even in chinese uh, people from bangladesh and other countries they also started to export rice to us and they also started putting basmati rice where india objected and uh, finally they were successful why so when they put basmati rice and they will get a premium price instead of rupee uh, if you go to us so it will get around in uh, 4 to 5 dollars per kg or something and how much it costs here right if you take uh, bangladesh or sri lanka or somewhere even not even 1 dollar so even if you put the transportation cost 
logistics profit even it should not they should not sell more than two dollars or 2.5 or three dollars but they'll be selling at a higher price because they are saying that they are also putting the basmati on it and they are also selling it as a basmati rice so which they cannot put it like the whiskey we cannot put for indian whiskey as a scotch whiskey because it has to be made in that particular area only for example if you take uh, basmati rice that has to be produced either in india or pakistan that area or then only we can call it as a basmati rice next slide so ipr for startups so here uh, this is also very close to the next topic what we have uh, the legal uh, enterprise formalities for a legal enterprise so here startup companies so what do you mean by startup companies any idea so here like startups they call in normal sense is like any new entity having some different model right you call it as a startup like a ola or maybe some other apps or maybe something else but as per the government it should be like you need to have one registration from the dpia department of policy and uh, uh, industrial trade so here you need to get registered so you have to incorporate your company and then you can register under that startup india scheme so the comment is giving one uh, some running some benefits for sipp entity startups intellectual product product property protection so sipp is a deal that means once you get that dp iit certificates so you get certain benefits for example what is the benefit in terms of patents so there is no need to pay the professional fee for the agents like uh, for filing of a patent application so the government fee will be 1600 for filing so with that even if you have 1600 you can file a patent application provided you have this startup india certificate and for trademarks you can only pay the government fee the professional fee will be paid by the government so only 4500 so i cannot charge if you have this uh, dpiit certificate and even for industrial designs the government fee is 1000 and no need to pay any professional fee to the facilitator so these are some of the so what happens that means if you are uh, like you are a startup company so because the government wants to encourage encourage intellectual property creation and uh, sometimes the facilitator cost will be too high if you take patents so if you go to any good law firm they charge around uh, uh 50 to 1.5 lakhs as a professional fee for one patent application so what did the government do so the government said if any patent agent is interested he or she can enroll and they should not charge the fee so rather we give a nominal amount so the government pays a nominal amount of 15000 to the agent who has facilitated i am also a facilitator for startups for uh, patents uh, trademarks and industrial designs so many trademarks i think more than hundreds we have filed the trademarks in hundreds of uh, numbers for uh, startup entities so that means they are also getting good benefit out of this scheme so as a business managers you have to see what are the government schemes available for the company so whenever you go to a new entity then you can recommend that okay why don't we go for dpiit certificate and uh, you can get certain benefits so that is what you have to give it to the new companies so here this scheme started in january 2016 and it's going on still and mainly to promote make in india campaign so because the government wants to lesser the burden on the startups so generally startups they do not have much cash so for that uh, and if they do not have cash they do not want to spend on intellectual property right so if you do not spend on intellectual property rights what happens so one day you will become one vanga pandu like uh, you have to go to others and you have to pay because you do not have any property on your name in terms of like copyrights in terms of patents and designs everything so you, if you do not protect then the big companies you, it will be very difficult to compete with big companies why they have their established distribution chain marketing chain and they have money they can spend in any way if you want to give a tough competition then you should have this rights registered on the company side yeah. next slide please yeah so these are some of the advantages that i have already told yeah so main thing is no need to pay the professional fee to the agent 
Next slide, please. Right. So here, the importance of IP in general is like uh, for some startup, so like I was telling, particularly in the technology sector, the main asset on which the capital may be raised is IP. So if you look at my companies, some companies, so they might have some three, four rooms, but everything is there in their systems in terms of uh, copyrights or in terms of programs or something else. So because of this program, so if it is working well, then you can achieve crores of footies. So that has to be protected. For uh, big companies, they have lot many machinery, lot uh, lot of assets in terms of lands, buildings, vehicles, other things. But for small companies, yes, they have only four or five systems. But whatever the data that is present inside the system is very very costly. So you have to protect it. Yeah. Yes. Next slide. I think it's over. Yeah, okay, we'll stop. I think you have already discussed. So we'll go to the other presentation about the legal. So any doubts on the IPR, so which will be very important and uh, no one will give this kind of knowledge and all the things. And still, if you have any doubts on the intellectual property rights, you we can have five minutes discussion on. Different, yeah. So patent should be new and there should be some technical advancement and there should be some industrial applicability and patent is for invention so that means whatever the things that you are doing in the laboratory a new product or a new process for copyrights it's only literary work if you are writing a program if you are writing a story novel so these things fall under copyrights inventions fall under patents everything should be new here, what you have to know that means at least the expression should be new. Let's say I was telling the Ramayana in Katte Kotte Teche, you can write in your own way and you can apply for a copyright. You can apply your own examples, your own examples. Like uh, what you can do is like nowadays, uh, if you look at these uh, Chota Beam stories, so they'll try to put something like you go to moon or something. They are, they are using their own creativity. Even in the narration of uh, Ramayana, you can um, use your own terminology, you can use your own uh, methodology to do something and you can get a copyright. So the essence is same, but how you describe. So the main difference is here only that expression should be new. We will not talk about the inventions in the copyright. Only that is common for both is software programs. So generally software programs has to be filed under uh, copyrights only. But people what they do? So the, the copyright protection is not so stringent or not so powerful when compared to patents. So what they will try to do is and software as such is not patentable. Software embedded in hardware is patentable. So here is a small difference. Only software is not patentable. When such software is embedded in hardware together it is patentable. So that means software plus the related hardware and you are packing it as a device, then it is patentable. Like a computer with uh, like all the parts and other things, it is patentable. And if you say only MS Office, it's only a software, right? MS Office, so or uh, OS, operating systems or anything. So it is not patentable because it's only a pure software. And once you say it has a computer program that has all the things in it, then it could be patentable. So this is only one area of copyright which falls under uh, both patents as well as uh, copyrights. Yeah. So, any other questions? No. So, here main uh, main thing is like do not forget about the trademarks. So, whenever you go to a new company, so it's very very important to know about the trademark trademarks, uh, and it's also important to see that you are not. Uh, infringing on others trademarks like if your brand name is very very close to others so one day you may receive a legal notice so this is very common in pharmaceuticals so if you look at go to any medical shop so, so very minor difference will be there between one uh, company brand to other company brand because wantonly they put it because once if any brand becomes famous so they want to have other companies they also want to like uh, for COVID-19 all of them will have right to have 
some kind of covid corona something like covid covid c something like that so everyone wants to make use of that one because everyone okay if you say as my tablet as a covid d so by default you think that it is for covid so like that so for example if you are the first one to put covid c then i'll try to put covid b or something like that so everyone wants to use that one and uh, sometimes you get a registration and sometimes you do not get a registration so as a business managers so your role will be like to get a registration first to get a trademark registration first and then you can start using otherwise what happens if you launch a brand let's say abc for uh, any foods and uh, if you if the trademark is not registered for any particular reason then you will not have the proper protection or if that is already registered by someone else he will send a legal notice and he will ask you for damages which is also not good so your suggestion should be that let us file a trademark first get the registered and then you can start using that mark for that particular goods or services so now we are to, uh, now still now we are thinking only about the properties but now if you want to become a company manager so like what would be the, like the what are the legal formalities so if you want to open your own company or if you want to be a part of a small company where the process is not there so what are those essential things that have to be registered so first thing is you have to know the name the name how do you incorporate your company first you should have a name right and how do you know that whether that name is unique or not I will take it to the high which side okay yes sir. yeah so mca ministry of corporate affairs so there is one site and you can look for that one and uh, once you try to look then it gives a very similar all the similar names so you can also do experiments it will be very good so that website is very very useful i think if you have not used already so that www.mca.gov.in and uh, or if you put just company name search availability on in google it will take you to this website you enter the details and it will give you so do you have this access to internet uh, for the, this system do you have the internet right yes so we have internet and we can also do in the mobile phones company search name availability and it will take you to this site mca portal so nowadays like uh, all the things you can do it online most of the company this corporate affairs is very very effective and uh, you can uh, you can uh, download various forms you can learn about the company incorporation and the uh, various rules not there na is there na just go to google so just type uh, ministry of MCA and yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the site, and uh, you want to go to that one. Uh, go to back and company search. Try to put it. Go back. MCA GOV dot IN. No, no, no. Just uh, company search. Yes. Let's check company name. Just the first one. so here you can put it so let's say infosys just an example i am your business and uh, the search sets down not in my so oh, oh so like that you can do you get what happened it gives very similar names <coughs> very similar names yeah now you right? yeah say infosys Yeah. So this many companies are there: Infosys Automation, Infosys BPO, Infosys Computers, Infosys Metal Pens. I think most of them are. So there is, I think, one different company. All are private companies. These two are somehow believe that the big Infosys adverts that is LLP. So such a big company, they do not go for LLP kind of thing. 
somehow he is trying to misuse that uh, name. And you can also look for the directors, who are the directors of that particular company. So if you want to register a new company, so you are a CA or the CS, they will be checking in that one and uh, they'll say that, sir, this name may be a problem. And still, if you insist, no, 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 I want, generally he will do name reservation by paying certain fee up to 1000 or something will be there. And uh, generally you have to give three names to him. He will put it in that order and uh, one of them will be picked and uh, you have certain time up to two months something to incorporate. And within two months, if you do not do, that means the name will be released to some other persons. Yeah, okay, leave it now. You know, right, how to search. Yeah, go to that uh, presentation. Yeah. Previous thing. Yeah, so here we can check it. And next thing is like once you have name finalized, what you have to do, we have to think about the company. So what are the various company types? Based upon the proprietorship. That is based on geography. Like proprietorship means like sole proprietor, partnership. Yeah, sole proprietor, partnership, and then you have LLPs. And then you have like uh, Hindu undivided HUFs and main entities will be like private limited, private limited and limited. And uh, yeah, so even now we have OPCs as well, one person companies. So these are various types. So then you have to choose and based accordingly, you need to make the agreements. And uh, so what are very, very important to make the company? Two documents are required, right? What are those? Mm -hmm. Memorandum of Associations and Articles of Articles of So yeah, these things are required and you need to put all your vision statement, vision statement, purpose, everything and then you get get the deed done and then what happens like for sole proprietor generally there is no not required all these uh, articles of association or memorandum of association are not required it's only mainly for private limited so uh, you should know the differences between each and every type so when you can go for a sole proprietors when you can go for a partnership company when you can go for a llb when you can go for a private limited and when you can go for limited companies so sometimes, most of the times, mainly limited means very large uh, when you go for uh, uh, equity shares and other things, uh, BSC, NSC, then you you know, okay. But if you look at this uh, uh, partnership, LLPs, private limited, so there are very, very minute differences, then you have to understand. So private limited means it's a like, uh, it's a legal person. And partnership is not a legal person, like uh, the rights that you get it, for the private limiteds are uh, protected under the Companies Act 2013 and uh, the latest rules. So here, if you want to go in a long term, for uh, then you can think of a private limited company. And if you are so uncertain or if you are very small and you are not sure, then you can go for a uh, type of partnership companies. And uh, even LLPs, what in there is like uh, LL for LLPs also you need get to get uh, registered before MCF, the name and LLPs. So uh, these are the things and uh, the designations of the persons also changes. For sole proprietor, you are called as a proprietor. For uh, LLPs, you are called as a partner. For uh, private limiteds, this, it's called as a directors. Private limited and limited companies. And uh, once you have this document ready and once you have this, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, investment capital and what is the share, then you can uh, give the same information to the uh, company secretary. He will get the incorporation done. But uh, it is very important to know what the process and also different types of registration. So, if you go to market, uh, they will give different rates. If you want to say company incorporation and if you put in Google, so many will say that from 5999 onwards, 6999 onwards. 
so what is that they are giving so are they giving gst registration option or are they giving under the permanent account or bank account bank account are they doing all these things or only just giving a one incorporation certificate from the uh, registrar of company llp is like advanced model for the partnership so here it is having some kind of a legal effect but not uh, that much when compared to a private limited so in between uh, we can say that uh, partnership and uh, private limited this is llp is on such type and uh, for llp is so even whatever the company rules are there so they are some of them are applicable and some of them are not applicable and even for a partnership you no need for registration you can just put an a 100 rupees stamp paper and you can start your company as a partnership form but for llp you need to check for the name availability and you need to get registered before the registrar of companies roc so the basic license that we would like to uh, get up gst registration very very important and uh, when you are exempted from uh, gst what is the uh, turnover so for certain people gst is exempted right what is the limit up to 40 lakhs it was earlier there 25 i think as far as i know it is up to 40 lakhs so that means if your business turnover is uh, less than 40 lakhs you are exempted from getting the gst but many your customers vendors they may be asking for a gst if you do not have this gst number they may not give business because they want to claim certain benefits if you have gst and uh, yeah every company and they also have a pan number and a tax number and bank account details so at the time of incorporation so we have for all the things you are and the stock establishment license as well like if you want to open a shop or any office then you need to have a uh soft and established on this from the respective municipal office municipal authority yes thank you and nowadays like uh, apart from that one uh, there is also one more slide for udyam registration i'll tell you about that one so this gst i think everyone knows about this one so we have three types of uh, gst in it is uh, state sgt cg cgst yeah Yes, yeah, yeah. IEG. So here it started in uh, 2017, and uh, the main purpose of introducing uh, GST is one nation and one tax. How it is applicable? Next slide. So SG, SG, state, if it is uh, within one state, then go for uh, SG, SG, or CG, SG. So that means. If you go to any restaurant or any bill, so you see both, right? CGST and SGST. But if you are uh, the goods are being transported interstate, if it is interstate or anything, then you have this IGST, IGST. So then you have to see which one to go, which the, what kind of uh, registration do you need it? Only one state, or if you have operations in more than one state, or if your goods travel uh, from. one state or another then you have to think it yeah. so yeah next slide and uh, some other things is specialized registrations like uh, if you are there to import or export if you want to export uh, then you have certain codes called as a exim code export import code will be there so once you have that code then you need to put that code and you can do the export import business exim codes and uh, if you are entering to mainly food business so this uh, food uh, standard authority or food standard certificate authority of india fsc ci license is very very important even in uh, fsc there are two things and if you are operating one is fsc registration and the other thing is fsc ci license so if you are uh, operating only in one state with a capital turnover of maybe around 10 lakh like something like that we can only go with the For registration, but if you want to operate in more than one states, then you can go for license. So, so this uh, is very. You can do it online without uh, uh, doing of any external help. You can get it uh, done. For example, so this IEC is import export code. Yeah. 
ಫೈನ್ around uh, certain like daily 100 for uh, i think for uh, llps and it's more for i think limited companies if you forget then you need to pay the penalties for the non submission of forms so i do not remember the exact form but uh, that will be taken by the chartered accountant only thing is you have to ask them that uh, uh, when should are there any forms that are submitted to be this month or next month so every as a business yes 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 if you take the gst so every the monthly and quarterly so some uh, information has to be provided to the government so that you should know yeah. next one this is also the next slide yeah so we should also have the basic information about the labor laws so if you are into any service sector or manufacturing sector so you should know about the labor laws because otherwise the labor officer will come and will try to inspect and he will look into the details of the employees so you should not employ any child labor and you should display what is the what are the total number of uh, employees present how many are present how many absent and everything and uh, uh like even the working hours so if there are any women employees you have to take additional care to for their transport and even in certain manufacturing companies the women employees are not allowed to work beyond a certain time so especially night shifts and other things so you have to see so whether you are complying that or not so that means if you have this basic information okay so what is the minimum age okay is always better to have to employ the person who has um, uh, crossed 18 years or at least so 15 years for uh, if he has crossed at least 15 years you can if it is the uh, industry is non hazardous then you can employ but it is always good to employ after 18 years because he becomes a major and is entitled to work in any company and uh, any safety aspects as well like from labor point of view like if you are working in uh, maybe construction industry or anywhere so see whether uh, all the formalities met or not maybe in a construction company maybe the cap is important that are giving their boots important gloves some other things like you do not know when an accident will happen so that time only this labor officer will come and see so whether you have given it or not whether they have worn at that time of accident or not so under normal conditions nothing comes if there is only some kind of accidents or any serious issues happen then they will look into all these things and being a manager if you are responsible then uh, it will be a problem for you and even on the working days as well like nowadays you can open uh, 365 days but you have to give the holidays to employees like a weekly off kind of thing like uh, uh, even the retailers shops and uh, those companies which are uh, under registered under shops and establishments like all the malls all the malls and uh, Uh, shopping complexes where uh, they are running shops so they can open now almost i think 365 days and even 24 hours but uh, you have to give the holidays to the employees and the working hours so most of them exploit right so actually the work is about for 9 hours yes but uh, what they do in some industrial areas the management uh, asks the employees to work for 12 hours so which is against the rules what we can do is very difficult whenever a case happens so whoever is manager so he'll also be part of that uh, offense next slide so already we have completed a very broad elaborate session on intellectual property that to protect the intellectual properties and to commercialize the intellectual 
property. Next slide, please. Fine. So here, as a business manager, you need to have a proper business plans, like having kind of certain roadmaps for employees, for products, for sales, for procurement. This year, we are standing here, and when we compare to peers, so we are here. So maybe if you are asked to prepare a roadmap, maybe for next five years, so then you should be in a position to prepare your roadmap. Okay, by second year. So for example, if Modi says, right, if you want to become a one trillion economy we has been saying for the past so many years so for that let's say if the company says now we are turnover is very minimum and uh, we want to improve by 10 percent or 20 percent by next year or maybe we want to double it in uh, three or four years so what has to be done so you have to prepare proper roadmaps so that roadmaps include for all the horizontal businesses vertical business processes everything you need to revamp everything so you should have the idea about the roadmaps and preparing the business policies. Yeah. Yes. So this is where uh, insurance is a very, very important thing. So the management says that no need of insurance, but uh, at least you have to insure uh, most of the things. Like many times the insurance also, there are various things. Let's say you are uh, moving some kind of fuel or uh, liquid in a tanker. So the insurance policies will be different. The uh, insurance will be only for the tanker, not for the goods in it. Sometimes your uh, insurance will be there for lorry, and uh, there may not be. It is not covered for the, the goods in it. Especially these the oil tankers. So what happens is uh, like once it overturns, so all the material will flow away, right? Petrol, diesel. Uh, so the lorry is uh, having insurance. He is paying the. And if uh, the tanker is damaged, he will get that uh, amount from that one. But for uh, what about the goods that is there? So if uh, there is one clause in it, like insurance, in that you have to see whether that the goods they are carrying in that vehicle are the goods also insured or not. So if the tanker is rapid practically, so one of my friend, so they were is a, is a tanker owner, and he was doing business for a lot many years, and one day. The tanker fell. The tanker uh, fell uh, sideways due to accident, and uh, all the fuel it got drained from the tanker. And he knew that he had a vehicle, and uh, there was a problem. There was a, a conflict because the goods was there. That insurance company was telling that we can only give the insurance for whatever the damage part for the insurance, not for the goods. This person who has asked, who has given that task consignment to you, he said that. I want the good delivered from year to year. I do not know what you do. Even if it is delayed, I want. I do not want to know about anything. So there was a conflict. Who has to bear the cost? No one will say no. no. I have because it will be in lakhs so for every vehicle. So ultimately, there was some problem and we will go to court of another. But as a due diligence, you need to see so whether the containers in terms of even. Uh, when you export or import even that ship or wherever it is moving so as is it completely insured from the starting point to the delivery point your goods are completely insured or not that we have to make a checkpoint so even if something happens even if there is a flood cyclone or anything or even if the ship got disappeared like a titanic or something what will happen to my goods it's very very important to know and accordingly you need to make your insurance can you sure yes, it is possible. Nowadays, there are a lot many insurance schemes out there. You need to look at it. And uh, once it is moving from uh, this country to that country, again, jurisdiction plays a role. So if you take that uh, in the insurance policy, it will be there only for India. And now from here, you are moving uh, the goods from India to, let's say, Europe. And it is passing through the waters of different countries. And one accident happened in the territories of, let's say, Netherlands. And you have to see whether I can I get or not. Yeah, so that means it is very, very important to see that one. So if you have the complete insurance, then it's fine. And if something happens, even at the port of entry or even there, if the customs officers or sees or anything happens, because if it is a perishable product, so that means it has a limited shelf life, let's say fruits or something. And uh, because you have more uh, 
pesticide residues that you are exporting from India to Europe and it got uh, stuck, the consignment is stuck at the port of entry, maybe in the Netherlands, which is very strict, or Europe or America. So then what is that that you have to do as a business manager? So whether that insurance company is going to pay or whether the company is going to bond that one or the other party who has ordered that one. So here uh, the terms, here we need to prepare the proper business insurance item. The liabilities, the roles and the roles and responsibilities that who is liable if something damage happens, then who is going to bear that cost as a business manager? You need to know about these things. So that means you need to tell him clearly that once I am transporting, it is your duty to deliver this product to that guy. And if anything happens, I will not take any responsibility. Rather, you have to take the complete responsibility. Okay. There are certain people, there are certain agencies who provide this. You will help you in insurance. You have to get to them, you can, they will do the insurance. So that means if you do not know this at all, and if you are sending blindly, if something happens in the middle of the scene, then it will be very difficult. Most of the times, like uh, generally before uh, there itself, you will having a checklist whether it is insured or what is the worth of this and uh, whether you are insuring to 100% or 10%. If the, again, based upon that, the premium increases. Let's say if the goods worth is 1 crore and you are undervaluing it as a 10 lakhs, then your premium decreases. And as such, if something happens, you'll only get a part of that one. Yeah. Then yeah, so then uh, even at the time of incorporation, you should know about this. Nowadays, the uh, uh, digital signature certificate, right? For all the forms, you should have the DSC. And who has to have, how many DSC should be there? Who has to maintain that uh, DSC? So what is the role and responsibility of each uh, DSC holder? Like mainly the account team, the director generally, they will be having the DSC is a digital signature and nowadays it has become very easy. Earlier we used to have a type 2 and type 3 DSC signature type 2 and 3. Now we use only 3 DSC type 3 we are using. So director identification numbers we are like taking any person as director. So if you go to this MCA website you will know the profile of the Director for how many companies is he director? Are there any cases or like whether is there is there any problem with that DIN number or not? That you can also know. And uh, yeah, so so here uh, one more thing is certificate of incorporation and commitment of business certificate. So sometimes what happens is while doing business we should be extremely careful. So the company may be having certificate of incorporation and. Uh, there should be also one more certificate called as the mainly commencement of business certificate. So that means I have incorporated a company, but I am not doing any business. So that means on a paper based company kind of thing. So if I give it to order or something, then he may never perform that uh, work order, whatever given. And then you should ask for, sometimes some company they ask for the commencement of business certificate as well. Like that means, that means you are going to start that business. Incorporation is different and commitment of business is also different. For small companies, they may not, but if you are if you are uh, registering yourself as a vendor with big companies, so then there will be a very big checklist with more than 50 parameters or something like that. So you'll be asking various details so that you should keep ready. If you are uh, providing goods or services to uh, maybe top 50 companies or something, so their evaluation process will be Completely different. Yeah, this one will be actually. Is it that? Yeah, it is about registration. So we can do it practically as well. So for all the small entities, if you want to, like in the Earlier session, I told you about startup company, right? So for there, you need to have DPIIT certificate. 
for if you want to call yourself as a startup, you need to have DPIAT certificate. But if you want your entity as a small entity, MSME, micro, small and medium entity, then you need to have this Udyam registration. So by having Udyam registration, so what happens, your entity will be called as a, there it will be there, whether it is micro, there will be different code in the certificate, whether it is a micro entity or small entity or micro medium entity. So in that it will be there. So you can go to that, just if you put in the Google, Udyam registration, and you will get uh, one link open in that you need to give the your other details and the phone number you, if you want to enter these details you will be getting an OTP once you enter that OTP you need to fill all the details there are about 45 something fields will be there so who is the owner what is the type of business we are doing what is the turnover for the last three years how many people are employed so once you provide all the complete information so then at the end again you will get one more get OTP and once you submit the OTP it will, you will get a certificate to your email ID and you can download from the Udyam registration website anytime. So only thing is you will be getting that OTP and you can get it done. So this Udyam registration certificate you can do it on your phone no need to pay any amount. If you go to other website they charge around some 2500, 3000 something will be there. But being a business manager, you can do on your own. So there are certain advantages. So of this Udyam. So mainly regarding the fee. So wherever you, uh, the fee will be different. Normally for large entities, it will be different, and for small entities, different. But if you want to prove yourself as a small entity, then the evidence will be this Udyam registration certificate. Even for societies like uh, even MLR in stuff, so in stuff technology, it is being owned by certain societies. So if the societies also can uh, get the gem registration certificate. So this will give you certain kind of concession. Go to next slide, please. So what are those concessions? So it will be a permanent registration and basic identification for an enterprise. So if you say that if you are for any mudra loans or any other kind of uh, loans, then this certificate is and it is a paperless and it is not self declaration like it is instantaneous. So sometimes if there is a information is not uh, properly filled, it may take two, three days. But most of the times if you fill and within uh, at least you will get the acknowledgement and uh, within a day or two, you will get the certificate. And the thing is you can add any number of activities including manufacturer services. So that means you can include there, it will be there like various uh, drop down menu will be there if you are in manufacturing you can say the manufacturing of uh, books shoe or anything and if you are into online services uh, retail services as well you can also add that services that means there is no limit to the number of goods or services and mainly so this Udyam registration certificate will help to get certain kinds of loan and uh, credit guarantee schemes public policy, public procurement policy and uh, government tenders and protection against civilian payments. So that means if there is any kind of uh, problem, let's say in during COVID-19, many could not repay the loans and the government have given certain relaxation or uh, even it cancel certain payments. So if, when you are eligible, only if you have this kind of certification and they say that this company has, for, in order to avail that scheme, so this company should be having this MSME certificate not uh, not before two years or three years. So that means because if they do not give any timeline, then everyone will start getting on the day itself. So they will be keeping certain uh, uh, deadline, keeping that saying that in order to avail this one, this company, this Udyam registration should be at least two years old or three years old, something like Yes, next slide please. Yeah. So, and, and the next thing is winding up of an entity. So, that means how do you close a company? So, there is a certain procedure. So, if you just uh, stop your operations, it doesn't mean that your entity is closed. So, you should get it closed in a proper way yeah, on the registrar of companies. Otherwise, what happens? So, just if you lock your company, doesn't mean that it is uh, completely closed. So, that means your uh, uh, income tax auditing will be pending, your uh, 
uh, the submission before ROC will be pending. And uh, if you do not close properly, your director index number gets blocked because you did not uh, submit any audit reports for the past uh, two or three years. So your uh, PAN card may not work, your uh, DIN number may not work. So there will be a lot of problems. And if you want to come out that time, that time you have to pay the penalties. So the penalty will be like ROC company daily 100 rupees and for income tax you are not filed for past two three years so the again that you have to pay in the so sometimes it runs into lakhs so that will be the problem with that work yeah yes so this is about the legal formalities now any other questions do you have Yes. Like uh, thing is, if uh, who is the actual creator, whether uh, as a part of the college uh, project or if there is own project, so you have to see. So here in patent, we have two names. One is applicant, and the other is inventor. Applicant is nothing but the proprietor or the owner. So inventor is a person who has developed that idea. Inventor is only always a natural person. Persons. Applicant can be. Natural person or a legal entity like MLR Institute Technology. Now, whoever is the applicant, he will get all the rights. So, if they are forming a startup, so that means the patent should be on the name of startup. If it is in the name of individuals, so then at least there is a process called as an assignment. So, that means transfer of rights from individuals to that company. It is also possible, but there is a certain fee and a procedure. Which is a lengthy, but initially, if they want to have, if they want to oh, form a startup, so they can develop the idea, but they can file a patent on the startup entity name itself as applicant. Inventor can be the students. And for this, if uh, sometimes the college may say objection, here I think it's not there, but why? Because you are using the facilities of the college. So, why will the college keep quiet? You will say that you also include my name in the applicant. Or you include my name in the applicant and you be the inventors because at the end I should have the power or the grip over the invention if it works. If it doesn't work, no one will bother. If it is a commercially viable idea, then the management says everything, everyone will say that I want to be a stakeholder in the ownership. The applicant has the complete rights. Inventor he has to sign certain forms at the time of filing saying that. I am giving this idea to this assignee. So by signing this, he will lose all the rights. Only for the namesake, his name will be included. That he is the inventor. It is actually the applicant who has the complete rights. Yeah. So if uh, you do not have any other questions, shall we close the session? Yeah. Thank you. So happy from the question or uh, is it happy that the session is ended? Both are. Yeah, if you want to have my card, I have a certain card as usual. You can get it. You can pass it. If you want, just give it a card if you have anything. If you want a card. So if you have any queries, you can you can reach me. I am available on LinkedIn. All of you are there.